guess what? He meant it. He meant every single, every single word he said. He's not like us who we say something and we hope we mean it. No, no, no. Uh -uh. No, no. Jesus meant every word. He's not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. So in Deuteronomy 28, he said, if you'll listen to my voice and you'll observe and do what I'm, I'm asking you to do, if you'll follow the way, I will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. And all of these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you'll hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed is the fruit of your body. Blessed is the fruit of your ground. Blessed is the fruit of your cattle. Blessed is the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep. Blessed is your basket. Blessed is your store. Blessed are you when you go out. Blessed are you when you come in. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They might come out against you one way, but they'll flee before you seven. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in the storehouse. And in all that you set your hand to. And he'll bless you in the land which he's given you. The Lord shall establish you a holy people. As he has sworn. And and verse 10 says. All the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. And they're going to be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. Let's say that again. The Lord shall make you plenteous in goods, plenteous in the fruit of your body. Say it. Plenteous in the fruit of your body, plenteous in the fruit of your cattle, plenteous in the fruit of your ground, in the land which the Lord gave you. You have more than an adequate supply. You have more than enough. Amen. The Lord shall open to you his good treasure, the heaven to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. Say, the all the work of my hand is blessed, empowered to prosper. Oh, and listen to this one. You shall lend and shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head, not the tail, above only. Not beneath. You know what? That's been cut in the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bought and paid for. It's yours. Take it. Take it. So, Father, this morning, oh, how we thank you for such a love. Such a love. You loved us so much when we were sinners. <laughs> we were slaves in the slave market of sin. We had no way out. There was no way we could be good enough to earn. <laughs> so you sent Jesus. Came as a man in a man's body with a man's mind, <laughs> with a man's emotions. But he was filled with the Holy Ghost and power. And he, uh, and he showed us the way. He showed us the truth. And by what he did on the cross, he, he purchased grace. Oh, he cut off the bonds of slavery, cleansed us from all unrighteousness. And blessed us. Empowered us to prosper in every area of our life. So this morning, Lord, as we celebrate what you did for us. As we take it into our bodies. We thank you, Lord, that this body. You said in 1 Peter 2.24 that in this body. Represented by this piece of bread. You bore all of our sin. Past, present, and future. You bore all of our sin, all of our sickness, and all of our dis-ease. And by the stripes that you were beaten with, we were made whole. Therefore, this morning, Lord, as we partake of this bread, we declare we are whole now. 
in Jesus' name. Thank you for that. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And your blood, represented by this little cup of juice, your blood not only cleansed us from all unrighteousness, made us acceptable in the beloved, made us able to be children of the Most High God, not servants, children, partakers of the divine inheritance, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And this blood not only did all that, but signed, sealed, and delivered every promise of God. So as we partake of this juice, we declare every promise, declare it, every promise of God is yes, and so be it to me now in Jesus' name. Why? Because I'm a child of God. My kids don't come in my house and say, hey, mom, can I have a Coke? They go and help themselves. See, we need to start thinking like children of God instead of servants of God. All right, Talis, would you play his uh, Chris McClarney? Here you go, Miss Pam. I'll drop that with you. And then we'll, y'all can be seated. Thank you. Good job this morning. Amen. Danny, you're getting more and more anointing. More and more anointing. Keep pressing. When you speak, confusion fades. Just a word. In some
I'm listening. Because I'm not going to miss one word. I'm not going to miss one word that he has to say to me. You know, I, um, pastor wanted to receive the offering, and I said, please, can I do it? Because the Lord shared something with me this week. I heard in my spirit somebody saying, why do y'all spend so much time, or why are you always talking about the tithe? Why are you talking about money? Because Jesus said you're going to have one of two gods. You're, you're going to trust in one of two things. You're either going to trust in him or you're going to trust in other things. It might be the government. It might be your job. But really what it all boils down to is support. Who are you, who are you depending on? Who are you relying on as your source? And he reminded me of the uh, rich young ruler. In fact, let's go there real quick. Mark 10. Mark 10. Yay. Yeah. And, and so, you know, y'all know the story. Jesus has been taught. This guy comes to him and he, he wants to follow him. He wants to follow him. He wants to be a disciple. He wants to, to be a sent one. He wants to be a Mark, a, a John, a Luke. He wants to be one. And in verse 20, he said, so he said, you know, what do I have to do? And he said, well, are you obeying the, the commandments? Which, thank God, we don't do that anymore. I mean, we do, but we don't. We don't, we're not, we're released from the law. We're not released from the moral law because we got the Holy Spirit to tell us what's right and wrong. We just don't have 600 and, and so many um, statutes that we have to follow. Thank God. Yeah, what we're supposed to do is follow the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. And so in verse 20, he answered him. He said, Master, listen, I've, I've done all of these since my youth. You believe that? No, I don't either. <laughs> but then Jesus beholding him loved him. See, he loves us even when we're messed up. Even when we're thinking wrong, he loves us. And said to him, oh, well, great. There's one thing you lack. I love what Brother, Brother Copeland says. Don't you wish you only had one thing that you lacked? <laughs> Don't you wish he could just look at you and say, well, there's only one thing that you need to correct. <laughs> Instead of a, a list this long, right? He says, go your way and sell whatever you have and give it to the poor. And you'll have treasure in heaven. And come and take up your cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying. And he went away grieved. Do you know where grief comes from? Loss. Fear of loss. For he had great possessions. And then he goes on and he tells the boys, he says, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He wasn't saying that he couldn't be saved. What he was saying is, he's not going to be able to walk in the richness of the kingdom because his, his heart's in the wrong place. So, so tithing is the very first and, and most minutest place where we say, Jesus, I just want you to know I trust you. I'm putting my faith in you for my support. I'm declaring that you're my source, not my job, not my government, not my husband, not my mom, not my dad, you, and you alone. And I will never trust anybody else. He's so after our heart. He's so after the way we think. He so wants us to put our trust in him. Because he said in Hebrews 13, 5, which is probably my favorite scripture, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And I always quote it out of the Amplified Bible. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never relax my, my hold on you. And I'll never leave you without support. Never. And I'm telling you, he has proved that to Ellen and I over and over and over. I'll never forget, after giving up our salary one year because the church was struggling, 
We gave up our salary. We said we trust God, not, not the church, not you all for our salary. We trust God. And because of that, we got way behind on our house, and our house was fixing to be sold on the auction block. But I, let me tell you, today I'm still living in that house because, because God's faithful. God's faithful. God sent a man from Knoxville, Tennessee that we had never met before who wrote us a check. He said, how much do you need to get your house out of Hawk? Never met him. And then he paid for the, the Wartburg a Christmas dinner too and paid for my house payment for the next three months till we got back on our feet. And you say, well, that's because you're a... No. No, it's because I'm a tither. It's because I'm a giver. Can I share your testimony? Uh, Williams have a neighbor who's 88 years old. So John does little things for him. He'll go over and pull weeds out of his yard and blah, blah, blah. And do, just do different things to be a blessing. So the guy came over to him the other day and... and John had been pumping him for information on photography because the guy's been in photography for 62 years. He said, well, you know what, John? He said, we need to upgrade your, your camera. And, you know, if, if, I, if we get you this camera, then you can have to have this lens. Dude just blessed him with about $5,000 worth of camera. Now, guess what? God's not a respecter of persons. What he did... And it wasn't the man, it wasn't the, the 88-year-old neighbor. It was God's word that says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Start expecting. Get your expector out there. Tell, tell it to come. Money, come to me now. Not for covetous reasons, but for covenant reasons. Amen? Amen. Jesus has blessed me. Bless me. And money comes to me from the north, the south, the east, and the west because I'm a sower and I'm a giver and I'm a tither. Amen. And because of that, I have rights. Amen. Amen? Amen? So this morning, if you need an envelope for cash or credit card given, well, we got you taken care of. Anybody need it? You can raise your hand if you need one. Look at all these. Oh, we got one. Everybody else? Look at so many ready people. I love ready. I gave without expectation. I was just, you know, I could just give out of, out of love. Out of love. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I wasn't expecting anything bad from me. But God loves you. <laughs> so God wasn't expecting. He was loving, right? So when we give, we give out of love. Why do you give your tithe? Because you love God. That's what he wants. He wants your heart. You know, if Alan bought me things, I, I laughed. I said, some little guy at the grocery store the other day said, that's the biggest diamond I've ever seen. I thought, I said, you better believe it. After 50 years, I earned that, baby. <laughs> but, you know, if he had bought that for me just to show it off, not that I didn't just get this. I've had it for a long time. You may receive. Um, but if, if he had done that just, just because, not because he loved me, it wouldn't mean anything. You know, I got my mama's 60th ring that my dad bought for her on her 60th. And I wear that as a reminder that love never fails. Amen? So do what you do out of love. Now, Father, as we plant this morning... As we come and we bring our tithe, we say, Lord, we trust you. Tell him that. Say, Lord, I trust you. I'm not trusting my government. I'm not trusting my job. I'm not trusting any man. I'm trusting you because I know you love me and you will provide for me. I will do what I need to do. You show me. You show me the right job, and I'll work as unto you. You show me the right person to sow into. I'll sow into them. And I, I will reap a mighty harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. Isn't it fun to serve God? 
I'm telling you, it's a, it's, it is. It is so fun to serve God. You just never know what he's going to do to bless you. All the people in that auditorium. Oh, he, wanted to, he wants to do the white version. White version, yeah. Can we do the white version, please? Uh, you better watch that these days, huh? Next thing you know, we'll be white supremacists or something. I doubt that. Say, so we bind, let, let's do that. Let's just bind those stinking words in Jesus' name. We bind every word of division that has been planted in this country. We're lovers in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. It, God, God's not white and God's not black. He's all of us. He's every color there is. Amen? And so are we because we're in him. He's our body right? So I'm not white. This is white. Hold up your, oh, you can't. Glenda's pants are white. There's none of us that are white. No political stuff. I'm not being political. I'm just being God. I'm, I'm made in his image and after his likeness. How about you?
there are several reasons, several reasons I play that. Several. Number one, when God hits, everybody's affected. Now you see individuals, individuals every now and then uh, just worship God and jump and run and stuff. But right there, God swept over a congregation. Now you might not have seen it, but I saw it. God started at one level, next level, next level, and finally everybody got into it. See, if it wasn't inside you right now, we try it again, you probably missed that part. If it's not inside you right now, where is it? It's inside you right now. It's how you respond to it. Some of the praise and worship uh, respond one way. Uh, somebody might respond another way. I've been around long enough to know. Now, you might not think that, but I've been around 40 some odd years. I've seen a bunch of what? Flesh and spirit. <laughs> I know back in the early uh, 80s, early 90s, man, you would have never got out of your chair for no reason unless God moved. But you needed somebody like me who when God moved in me, I ran. I, I wasn't trying to be a preacher. I was inspired by God. And man, you wouldn't believe all the people that talked about me and Guess what I found out? Ignore it. They're going to talk about you anyway. <laughs> Quit concerning yourself with what people say about you. Amen. Raise Amen. your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Persecution and affliction come from what? The devil, man, not God. God gives you power to overcome it. Like this thing I'm up against. Now, if it was me, I would have my um, strokes and everything went fine. But God didn't plan it that way. I had to go from what? One faith to another faith. Amen. Faith to faith and what? Glory to glory. You know what glory is? God's manifested presence. Guess what's better? God's manifested presence is better than sickness, disease. I don't know where everybody is, but uh, thank you. I know where my kid's at. He's in Florida. <laughs> Don't get jealous. <laughs> See, whether you know it or whether you don't, you need a rest. Yes. I rested so much I got tired. <laughs> Put up there uh, Hebrews 11, 6. <laughs> and uh, Greg, bring me the uh, offering. If she, as soon as she's done with it, bring me. Because this place ain't about money. It's about freedom. Free to be who God wants you to be, not who you want to be. Or I've had a bunch of stuff happen to me. And uh, God's better. I'm still trying to get my voice straight. And I ride God every day. Lord, what about my voice? See, the Bible says in Matthew 6, 6, pray to God who is in secret. The only way you'll ever contact God is through faith. He's not a human being. He knows you inside out. 
I said, okay, now let me, let me help you. I believe that Jesus bore my sin, sickness, and disease in his body on a tree. I believe. So why am I not, if you guys, why are you in trouble already? This ain't no why, when, where, how. Thank you, Jesus. It's in his timing, not yours. Your timing is submitted to faith. Without, with, with, out. In other words, there's faith here. How many here got faith? Sure it is. Why? Because he's here. But he already told you, but with, with, out. See, you might be able to see faith from long distance, man. What we're talking about with faith. Not without it. I can see, I can see faith here. Faith come by what? So it's not a lack of faith. Just like this. It's not a lack of faith. Not a lack of money. There's plenty of money in here, brother. Yes, there is. What is it? Fear. Fear of not having enough when God already told you. Without faith, it's impossible. Don't don't lie to yourself and think it's possible. It ain't possible. Stop. Well, it's possible because I know stop it. Without faith, it's what? Now, I don't know what you, is this impossible, me walking? It was. It was, according to the doctors. What? Well, oh. Everybody know what you said, man. <laughs> I said it was according to the doctors. What did the doc say? They said you'd live life in a nursing home. And the first thing I said. Unable to the, do anything. The first thing I said, you don't know my God. Okay, oh, my God. Where did I say it? Inside me. But we said it outside. Faith without works is. What are all the works? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, there's your work. You supposed to be working it. Come on, say that. Speak the word. What did I say? You said you're supposed to be working it. You got to speak it. In order to work your faith, you have to speak it. See, if not, you can't, you, you, not me, you must put it to work. If you had a packet of seed, even if it's guaranteed seed, it won't do anything. It won't produce anything until it's planted. The words of your mouth are seed. The, the, your, in your lap is a is a bag of seed for whatever you need. Well, if you could speak better. Oh, hush. <laughs> agree with God. I agree with God. Alan Carr, your faith has made you oh. to with it. Oh. But don't look old, don't act old. How does whole act? <laughs> How does whole look? No, no. Faith without works is dead. I got to work it. Now, if you're going to be broke the rest of your life, don't work it. If you like broke better than more than enough, don't work it. Well, I want more than enough. Then start working it. My God shall supply somewhat part of half way uh, could be uh, put up there uh, Hebrews 11 6 now why without faith it's impossible what is faith the way you believe now how you believe someday when I see this uh, I think Wherever that thing is, 
Someday when I see that, the offering day, let me help you. This took no faith. Your mind was on your need. What do I need? Faith without it did. Well, Pastor, what do you need? No, 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 it's not about me. <laughs> See, God will take care of me. Well, I know that. Stop it. God's going to take care of me because I grew to that. You know how you grow up and God take care of you? When you ain't got nothing. You learned how to what? Live with nothing and believe God. Try it again, you probably missed it. You learn. Put there uh, Hebrews 4 uh, 11. You learn. See, Paul could have never said 4 19 without, without this. He could have never got a Philippians, Philippians 4. I'm sorry, Philippians 4 11. Flip out. I, I, I said Hebrews. Huh? No, no. We're not doing that one. Uh, Philippians 4.11. Thank you. So let me try one more time. Without faith, get, get that straight. Yeah, put it back up there, please. Philippians 4.11. 4, 11. It says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned... In what it, why did I, I have learned what I have what? Learn. Learn something. In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Now how would you ever learn whatsoever state you're in unless you learned it going through it? Right. Amen. And it doesn't mean to be content with lack. It means, it means be, overcoming. be content with knowing that Jesus has already supplied your need. Now what's it? Tough, what's the tough part? Believing that Jesus did it at Calvary. Yep. Can I say this? Don't get mad at me. Jesus, Jesus overcame your lack at where? Calvary. Yeah, right then right yeah. guys like me come up here and say it and you got to mess with it and think maybe I got it and maybe I don't. Let me help you. I was called. No, no, no. I was chosen to preach the word. If you weren't here, thank God you are here. If you weren't here, I'd be down on the street. First thing I did was go downtown. I got finished with my neighborhood. I went downtown. Why? Because I know everybody needs this. Everybody. Now, there's going to be some stuff that you might need in between. You might need to lose some weight. You might need to stop your, the way you're talking. How the abundance of the heart, the mouth. Now, what have you been saying? Well, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got... Where did you get that at? Not in the Bible. Not in the Bible. You call things. Call it. Thank you for prosperity. Come here, prosperity. Come here now. Well, I think that's weird. Let me help you. You're weird. See, if you're not calling prosperity, then you're you're satisfied with lack. Not me. I was in a bar. I had all the lack I wanted. I was on my 10th martini, and somebody came in. I was high on pills and drunk on martinis. And somebody came in and sat right next to me. See, God's here whether you can see him or not. Now, you know what God's here for? He wants to know what you want. 
And if you really want something, you'll stick with it. But I've seen so many Christian people that want this and want that, and next thing you know, they're gone. Where they go? I don't quit. Stick with God. People get weary in well doing. Because don't get what weary. They get weary in well doing. What does that mean? You get tired of it. You know, you think that God's going to move in your time frame. Remember that there is a due season for everything. There is a time for everything under the sun. And if you won't quit, your due season will come. Amen. It says right here, not, not that I speak in respect of what? Lack. Need. Want. See, I'm not, I'm not speaking in, in respect of, of want. I mean, people here want something. Let me try it again. I didn't see no hand. How many people here want something? Everybody. I want a thing called more than enough. I got. A, I want a uh, brand new car. I want a brand new pickup truck. Now you might not want that. Am I willing to believe God for it? You know, I've seen people receive Jesus, and the next thing you know, about five or six weeks later, they're gone. You know why? They weren't ready for what was ready, what was going to happen afterward. See, Satan hates to lose you from his kingdom. And he'll make you miserable if he can. I remember I was driving around in my, my nice, nice little Volkswagen and had 208,000 miles on it. I kept saying, Lord, Lord, 208,000. Lord. He said, it won't be long. About two months later, Lord, 208.2. But it's, that's what I kept saying. Yeah, but it's running. I said, Lord, can I use the word barely? It's barely running. It has never but barely running. ran. It has been a great car, and it's still running. Somebody gave it to us. That's right. Paid for. Paid for. When it was brand new. What'd you do? I told him, thank you. I got this old car someone gave me, and I'm looking at this old car, and every time I look at it, I want to do something with it. <laughs> so I took it to the cleanup shop, the detail boys, and man, that thing came back looking so good, man, I think. Man, I think I'll sell it. No askers. No people that want it. I thought, man, this is a, a, a classic. It was classic to me. <laughs> so I just sat there. Now I know what these barns are full of. When they come up and they got these old, old cars, and everybody's just excited because this old car comes out of this old barn and looks real old, and somebody cleans it up. Yeah. But then it gets what? Dirty again. Yeah. He said, okay, I'm this. Not that I speak of. Read that, Jerry. I'm going to read it this time out of the Amplified okay. Bible. It says, not that I am implying that I was in any personal want, for I've learned how to be content. Stop, I've what? Learned. Satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I'm in. 
Now, whatever you know, I don't know. But I do know this. God gave me a vision. And I tell God all the time, well, you give young men dreams. Oh. So now the big deal is running the difference between a vision and a dream. Because that's a difference. So God gave me his vision. No, such good guys. I mean, I'm believing, I'm believing God right now for a place for you guys. Because I go, I know, I know. That's why I don't preach past 1130. Because I know. We had our kids sit on the front row with us. Man, I got one kid, he's 50. What is he? Till when? February. He'll be 50 in February? I thought he already was. Well, never mind then. I ain't got a kid 50. All right, now read that 11 one more time. I've got uh, six minutes. Go ahead. Yeah. Not that I am implying that I was in any personal want, for I've learned how to be content, satisfied. Ah, content. Satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed and I am not disquieted in whatever state I am. Meaning no matter what comes my way, I know God's got this. God's got the thing. The word content, C-O, company, tent. C-O-M, prefix, to what? The tent. This is a God kind of tent. Moses went out to the tent and met God. Yeah, yeah, that's the Old Testament. Son, let me help you. The word is meet. He met with God in the tent. He had to what? Leave everything else. And what? Oh, this is rough now. Separate himself. Listen, see if anybody heard me or not. Yeah. I have learned in whatsoever state. How about Alabama? How about Georgia? How about Tennessee? See, God wants you to be content with lack. No. God wants you to be content with more than enough. Well, I ain't there yet. Then you got some work to do. It says this. It says, okay, I know how. I know, verse 12, I know, I know both how to what? Be abundantly blessed. What's it say? Tell you what to say. Now, if you don't know how, you ain't earned nothing. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. How many here think God's broke? God's not then broke. Then you don't be broke. Uh -uh. You're the body of Christ. Christ. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. The amplifier. So says, amplifier. I know how. I, you can put this, I've learned how. Did I, can I? You know, most people got testimonies because they learned something. Why? Because it affected you. Today's offering affects me. Why? Number one, there's more money in here than that. But the question is, is there more tithe money in your net? And the tithe is what his. And even the bigger question is, are you willing to obey God? Are you willing and 
obedient. Being willing is one thing. Being obedient to what your will is, that's another. And so being a, obedient is one thing, and not being willing to do it is another. You can be obedient and do it unwillingly. And God says he wants cheerful givers. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want anything to have hold on you. I got uh, three minutes. Can we read that in the Amplified? Yeah. Verse 12 in the Amplified. I know how to be abased and to live humbly in straitened circumstances. And I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare or going, going without and being with on, with, in want. Verse 13. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything. I am ready for anything. And I'm, ready for I'm ready for anything. I am ready for anything. I'm ready for anything. And I am equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient. In Christ's sufficiency. Amen? I'm just telling you, how powerful is that? I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I love what Brother Copeland said. Spiritual warfare isn't fighting for something. It's fighting to maintain your victory. Spiritual warfare is fighting to maintain victory. I am not a victim. I will never be a victim. I am a victor. Christ has made me more than a conqueror in all things. I always win. I always win. I always win. If I don't quit, if I don't back up, if I don't turn to the left, if I don't turn to the right, if I'll just follow him, if I will press for the prize of the high calling, Amen? We got the right stuff, folks. God has given us all things that pertain to this life and the life of godliness. I have the right stuff. Do you? Well, some of you do. Listen, I'd, I would yell it out. You better believe I got it. You better believe I got more than enough. You better believe what Jesus did for me was more than enough. You better believe it. You're looking at a victor. Amen. You're looking at more than a conqueror. Amen. That's who I am. I'm not taking it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You knock me down, I'm going to get back up. God told you. And the wind is open. Or just... Be in lack and let them close. No he way. Wants to open the windows of heaven to pour you out. Empowerments to prosper. Lack. No. Uh uh. Pour, pour out Empowerments to prosper. That's what the blessing is. Empowerments to prosper. He's blessed you going in, blessed you going out. We just did covenant Wait, let meal. Me, let me say one thing. It's not, it's a dime on a dollar. Think about it. What can you buy for a dime today? L literally. You want a lot of money. I don't want nothing. I, I want you to be blessed. And I know. I know that small, thin dime. I know that small, thin dime can open up something that will never close unless you close it. You know, it's fun when you're facing lack uh, man, to, look at, to look at the let's devil go. and go, ha, ha, ha. Hey, let's go. hey, dude, you forgot. I'm a tither, and I have tither's rights. Isn't that right, David? Yes, sir. I mean, I'm a I tither, and I, I have David tither's Dixon, rights. This is so true. Let me tell you what God told me. Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. What is that? <laughs> okay. He said... <laughs> You know, I was getting my tie together, you know, it's like a dime and a dollar. God said, he told me to get a lot more. He said, let me show you, how, let me show you what I can do with that. Yeah, there you 
So, you know, I could have just been obedient and said, wait a minute, just give my time. But he said, no. He said, let me show what I can do. So I, I just be obedient. I just did it. I gave more than my time. And God is talking to some of y'all right now because you're, you're in some strange places. Let me tell you something. Miracles happen in strange places. Oh, when you're in a tight spot, that's when the miracle comes. Right. Don't get scared. The devil wants to, he want to feed you fear. Take your mind off yourself and look how big your father is. Give. And give some more. And really give the devil man and give it even more. Let God, let God show you what he can do. Now, why did I stop him? Because some people, not, not Andre, but some people got some stupid thinking. Especially when I think 45 minutes to tell you what God said. I am responsible for those words. Yeah. How? You don't want to know how. Yeah. Your responsibility is yours, not mine. Your responsibility is to hear. You're right. Good. You know, God said, I gave you eyes to see. I gave you ears to hear. I gave you a receptive heart, but it's up to you to choose to use them. I want you to give the testimony that you just gave to me, too. Pastor was talking about how uh, God could bless you. And, of course, she was talking from her, what her and Pastor went through. Well, as far as me and Daryl, we were in a position where our house, we were behind on our, our mortgage, and God put us in a program that, that we were able to, they paid our mortgage for three years, three years, and then our house burned to the ground, totally destroyed. You, of course, you think you just, I know we have a God that could take care of everything and had to rebuild everything brand new, brand new house in the same spot. God is amazing. So I'm not a pastor, and God blessed me, me and Daryl with that, so he could bless you with that too. So tithing works. Prayer works. Super abundantly more than you could ask or think. Amen. Amen. That's absolutely right. Absolutely. absolutely. And they have a beautiful home. Amen. And uh, it's at least seven times, if not more, seven times better than what they had before. God's not a respecter of persons. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in here today and you say, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life, if you're watching with us, if you're joining with us online, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I'm not talking about just your Savior. I'm talking about being your Lord being Lord means that you're going to follow what he says. You're going to hear what he says. You're going to trust what he says. You're going to do your best to do what he says. So if you've never done that, you might have received him as Savior. Thank God for that. And if you've never done that, do that today, right now. But, but take that extra step. Let him be the Lord of your life. Say, Jesus, here's my life. Take it. Do something with it. I choose to listen to your way. I choose to walk in your footsteps. I choose to listen to your instructions. And I choose to get your kind of results. And I thank you for it. I thank you today. I am a born again child of God. And you are my Lord. Now if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Man oh man. Jesus said boys don't leave Jerusalem without being endued with power from on high. It's the power of God to do miracles, signs and wonders just like he did. It's, it's, the Holy Spirit is your partner. Jesus said, listen, everything that the Father has is mine. And I've given it to the Holy Spirit to show you. See, without the partnership of the Holy Spirit, you and I can't achieve those things. And so he gives you this supernatural prayer language. Not only does he fill you with power, but he, fills, he gives you a supernatural prayer language. So that you, who don't know how to pray as you ought, I don't know about you, but I sure don't. If I knew how to pray as I should, I would have known how not to get into the situation I got myself into, right? 
That's right. But he knows exactly how to get me out. So if you've never received your prayer language, you've never received the Holy Spirit to live in you, let's do that right now. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me to overflowing with the Holy Ghost and power. I have it now. I have my supernatural prayer language, and I can pray in tongues right now. La bara se que le biando loco shandara ma que le biama lo do lo loco shandara ma chiliama balakianda, and it's a language that you don't learn. It's just a faith language. Just like Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water, he never had walking on the water school. All he did was get out of the boat. And all you do to speak in tongues is open your mouth, use your own voice, and alaki benedele basi ke le ku shondo lo ko bananda ki ama le benende nele ki indele bo sanja, and that's the Holy Spirit praying for you. God's perfect will in every situation. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I declare over you that you're the head and not the tail. You are above only and you are never beneath. I want to declare over you that God has given you power over all the works of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. Now I station angels of the Lord round about you to protect and to keep you until we meet again tonight for prayer at, six, at 530 in Jesus name. Do we have announcements? If not, I have a couple. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We roll them. Oh, I'm not about to forget. No, no. Mm -mm. Hello. To those of you who are new to the river, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us. To learn more about us, you can stick around after the service and talk with one of our elders, or if you're watching online, just visit our website. That's where you can get the latest information, submit prayer requests, and give safely and securely. That's all at rolc.org. We're finding new ways to stay connected as a body of Christ. That's why we've started our card ministry. So we encourage you, pick up a family info card in the lobby, fill it out, and return it to the black basket. And if you have any other questions, feel free to talk to Connie Williams. Join us every other Monday for our community Bible study that's held at the Fort Town Apartments office. It starts at 7 p.m. Don't forget to talk to Willie or Lynn Gaston about the Effective Gospel Outreach Ministries. They go out the third Sunday of every month and give clothes and blessing bags to people from all walks of life. And best of all, they pray with them. There's always a need for toiletry and clothing items which need to be brought here to the church. And if you'd like to give monetarily, there will be an opportunity after the service at the Silver Bucket on the stage. Some exciting news for the Waters Church. They're kicking off their first week of services at a new location in Trenton. If you'd like to plan a visit and support them as an extension of the river, the address is right there on your screen. And you can always find out more at rolc.org. Our men's ministry has a breakfast the last Saturday of the month at the Golden Corral on Gun Barrel Road starting at 8.30 a.m. For more information, talk to Andre Jude. That's ROL Live. Don't forget, you can join us for services at any of our three locations. The Waters Church in Trenton, Georgia. River of Life Lafayette, Georgia. And right here at River of Life Church, Chattanooga. To find out more, visit our website. That's at rolc.org. Well, we have a couple of birthdays here. Uh, Tyler's Green turned 21 on Wednesday. Woo! Stand up, sir. All right. Cindy Hill had a birthday this week. Uh, should we ask how old you were? How much? 35. Stand up, girly. And Miss Linda Lewis, Miss Linda Lewis. Oh, come on, girl. You get to stand up, too. She's turning 79 on Monday. Woo! And then we had an anniversary, Pam and... Oh, no, don't sit down. No, 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 no. And then we had an anniversary. Greg and Pam Hill had an anniversary. What? Which one? 39. 39. Oh. That's true. He really said, he, I'll have that. That's another story. 39. 
You have one too? Stand up. Woo! Golly, golly, golly. All right. Yes, ma'am, you got something too? Tuesday. All right. Well, we'll. All right. Come on. Stand up. Stand up. Stand. Okay, stay standing. Ready? Now you remember. If you're if you're new to the river, when you sing a happy birthday to family, you sing it as loud as you can and as off key as you can. Amen. So that they never, ever, ever forget it. And then we'll also do anniversary at the same time. Right? Ready? Yeah. Happy birthday. To you and a hand happy anniversary. Happy birthday to you. And many, many, many more. Amen. Woohoo! <laughs> Glory to God. I said my kids, my kids tape this every year when we call them and do this they because they play it for a good laugh. So when you need a good laugh, just go back on and watch this. Amen? I have one more announcement. Oh, okay. Summer's over. Summer's over? Yeah. Boo hiss. Boo hiss. I, nobody wants summer to be over, do we? School started, right? Ah, it's back to the grind. Also, I have another announcement that I didn't think about. Tylus, um, August 24th, how many of you all remember Anthony and Glenda Bailey? Well, we ordained them, gosh, I don't know how many years ago it's been, but she is hosting a women's conference in Chattanooga. They now pastor uh, in New Jersey or, or Maryland or somewhere up north. Somebody can correct me if they know. And uh, But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there if anybody would like to go. I will be going. It's August 24th uh, from 10 to 3. Now, you know, I don't know that there's still word of faith. So just go prepared to take what, what is good, spit out what's bad. Amen? But I just thought it would be fun to go and support her. So anyway, tickets are $10. Uh, if, and um, the, I will post... I will post the information online, and uh, if we want to do that, Goodbye. yeah, <laughs> I'll post the information online, and if you don't have access to online, grab me afterwards, and I'll make sure you get it. All right, bye. Love you.